Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Community Cohort. I'm Josh. He's Corey. Hey. That's Greg. Yep. And we're glad that you're joining us, growing closer to God during your daily whatever. whatever. We're diving into Ephesians, and we're going to be going through chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. But before we get going through that, I'm curious, how was your day? <laughs> Man, that is a, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um <laughs> My day today uh, was just busy. It was a busy kind of day, uh, task-wise. Lots of phone calls ringing in uh, today, especially like in the afternoon hour. We got to like eleven o'clock today, and it just picked up like crazy. And uh, who's awake at eleven o'clock? I think most of the world. Touche. Eleven eleven a.m. Not you know p.m. in in the in the morning. You know, <laughs> most, uh, most of the world meaning those people who aren't working third shift. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's it and is it teenagers. is Chris, it is Christmas exactly. It is Christmas vacation <laughs> that right is now. Fair. Yeah. My I children are not. I can't up get my boys early. to wake up before noon. Yeah, that is a rough challenge. And then uh, they do when they get up and they're like, "What's for breakfast?" I'm like, "Breakfast was five hours ago. You missed." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're trying to start to slowly establish kids back into their their normal routine so that they're not super jarred when they go back. But yeah, the, definitely. Lots of late sleeper inners in my house. Slowly is is a good plan. I that didn't happen at our house, but they're surviving. Yeah, they, yeah, they, that's good. They survived the rough transition from <laughs> staying up and getting to sleep in to now you have to be up at seven in the morning. Are they back at school now? Yep. Oh, really? Man. Yep. Early. Yeah, they started early. on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's gross. Did, did their you? did their did their winter break start sooner? Early. Did they get the full two weeks like everybody else? They didn't technically, but because it's like they're online at home, there were a couple days there in in that uh, week right before Christmas where the teachers were like, well, you know, if you got work to catch up, you're going to do that today. And as my kids don't have work to catch up. Okay, so they, they just they didn't have anything to do those days. Didn't so, technically get extra days off, but they they had some extra days off. Right. Gotcha. They got their hours in that are required by the state without necessarily sitting in class. Ah, yes. Fair enough. But then they Fair had enough. to go back on January 2nd. Yes. That's Yeah, that's yucky. I don't like that. Now Jackson was like, "We got to go back to school this week." And I was like, uh, "No." No, you don't. You got. He's like, no, we've already been off for two weeks. Um, no, 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 no. It just feels like two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I've been enjoying because I, I. This is my short week at work, so I only work today and tomorrow. Um, but I've been enjoying having extra time to hang out with everybody. We've had had more of an opportunity to just kind of chill out together as a family at the house. So that that's yeah. been nice. Yeah, I, I know that. I don't know when your guys has ended, but Bronson went at least one or two days after my kids were out. So, huh. so they they did get theirs started a little bit earlier. And Baroque only had the Friday before Christmas off, and then they'll have the you know the two yeah, weeks. Yeah, our oh, our yeah. kids Christmas. went all the way through that Friday. They they didn't go the full day. They released at like one o'clock. So they had their they had their school Christmas program, and then they allowed kids to go home early, but they could stay until one. So they were yeah. they were there most of the week. Yeah, was, <laughs> was there a lot of kids who chose to stay in school? That uh, my children stay in school <laughs> until one Ch- chose. You mean chose. their parents chose yep. for them we to stay in school? Chose to not pick them up. <laughs> yeah, no, my kids got out like Monday and Tuesday. So anyway, lucky. Yeah, yeah. So they they had some time off ahead of time, but yeah. Neat. So they go back on the second. So that's always a rough transition, right? Like yeah, uh, for sure. You stay up late. For you know New Year's Eve, and yeah. you kind of get a chance to recover on New Year's Day, but then it's right back at it, just right like the rest of us it. going back to work. That's it. That's it right there. <laughs> yeah, every time the weekend's over, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time it's pretty rough. Yeah, that Monday rolls around real fast. Indeed, not cool. Yes. <laughs> well, for me it's Sunday, but sure, right. Yeah, you've got a little bit different schedule. I do, I do. Yeah. As do I. I mean, my schedule is pretty off kilter as well. Like I've, I, I do have Mondays, but not as frequently as you know. Well, you don't work Mondays either. I don't work Mondays at all. But the days that I have to go back to work are miserable because I have to be there at 
five or quarter till. That's why I really like Mondays because everybody's at work or at school, and I am snuggling with puppies. There you go. That's what I do for good times. Nice. Yeah. Snuggling with puppies. How many do you have by now? Three. Okay. I didn't know if it, I didn't know if you'd gotten more. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop it. Josh it does kind of. Their family does kind of hoard dogs a little bit. No. No. Particularly was, large ones. I mean, I'm not gonna say large. <laughs> I would say well, I don't know what's between medium and large. I mean, your one dog <laughs> is <laughs> literally <laughs> like probably the second largest dog you could get. I mean, not true. Great Danes are right up there. She's sir. not a Great Dane. She's well, a boxing. It's a great name ah, and a boxer oh, okay. mix. Okay, sorry. She's Excuse fancy. <laughs> if you say so. She's. I. I told Julia that I want to get a uh, Tibetan Mastiff. I don't know if you've ever seen that, <laughs> oh. but it looks like a bear. Yeah, yeah those I've things are those. very large. My dog is fancy. She. She's a Welsh Pembroke Corgi. She's a dog of the Queen, sir. Right. So, have yeah. you found a name for her? Her oh. name is Mabel. Okay. Yeah. I say you're going to call her Lizzie? No. No, her name is Mabel. Mabel. Definitely not calling her. I'm not naming her after Queen Elizabeth. Mabel. <laughs> that is not, not I the still best, felt uh, like Penelope fit your dog. Really I know well. you liked Penelope. Mabel. I'm not into Penelope, but you know, Mabel's a. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Penelope is a name that's not used often. Where, enough. where, where did Mabel come from for a dog mm, name? Uh, well, our dogs are kind of named somewhat old. I don't know, older. Maybe not. Murphy and Spencer. They kind of have like. M- elderly male names. Corey's and, dogs have old souls. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I wanted an uh, uh, older lady name for my dog and Mabel. Uh, Mabel is what I came up with. How about Grandma for the next one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, she... <laughs> so I was trying to decide between a couple and then Tiffany was like, well, you should name her Mabel because I was saying she lays out flat like a pancake and I kind of th- wanted to name her pancake too. That was another thought and she's like, well, you could nickname her Mabel Syrup. And that's pretty much how our the evolution evolution of our nicknames go for our animals anyway. So okay, yeah. So it's just like a whole thing. So it turns I mean, into a process. She was laying out like a pancake, and you yeah. went for, wanted an older name. You could have gone with Mrs. Butterworth. It <laughs> 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 is pretty good. I don't. I don't know the logistics of that, if that if that's appropriate or not. You know. I think as long as you're not trying to sell her as Mrs. Buttersworth, <laughs> you're probably not in you're not in any jeopardy you with probably, tra- probably trademark. All right, probably all right. <laughs> You'd have to get another dog and name him Mr. Buttersworth. <laughs> Uncle Ben. Or <laughs> Uncle Ben. Oh man. That would be uh, quite a quite a combination there. Yeah. yeah. We we've always joked about naming a dog Steve. We've never done it. Dude, Steve is a great name. Yeah. That's an awesome name for a dog. Steve. I like funny names like that. Maybe, maybe we need to move on to... Uh, maybe the maybe real move stuff? On to the stuff the that we're supposed to learn and, about? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to pray, and then uh, we'll let Corey go ahead and read this. But Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the fun that we've been able to have, the, the laughter that we've had. And, and Father, as we look at your word today, Lord, we ask that you would be just glorified and honored by... Uh, our conversation, and I pray, Father, that you would be, um, Lord, just, um, Father, that you would you would uh, just speak to us uh, and guide us that we might glorify you in all that we say and do. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 All right. As Josh said, this uh, episode, we are going to be reading Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you, as is proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. For know and recognize this, every sexually immoral or impure or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. All right, so this is, again, a con- kind of a continuation of our conversation that we had uh, last week uh, as we were talking about putting away uh, certain actions, which really is still a continuation uh, of what Paul said in in very beginning of chapter 4, which is to urge us to walk worthy of the calling that we have received. 
And, uh, and so here we come to this kind of new section of it. And really, like I said, it's kind of just more of the same type of conversation about the things that we really should be avoiding and, and the things that we should be doing. So is there anything in this list that really stands out to you guys as you read it? So I was looking through it and it says every sexual, sexually immoral or impure or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and of God. And it just kind of struck me like that hits pretty much everybody. So I don't know. That was, that was really kind of a struggle because, you know, everybody or almost everybody, I would say has hit on at least one of those things being sexually immoral impure, greedy, idolater, you know, everybody's, Everybody's got their their struggles and their and their thing. How does that how does that work for you know, we are going to be inheriting the kingdom. How does that how does that work when it says that we don't have an inheritance in the kingdom of God because we have these things? What do you think about that? I think that thankfully we aren't those things anymore because we have the saving grace and blood of Christ upon us. You know, when we ask him to come into our lives, he takes away all those things. And so it's telling us to steer away from those now that we, you know, we are with him. So sure. We're still going to struggle, but when we do, we still have his, we have his grace and mercy and, and we, thankfully we can, we can still inherit that kingdom. Yeah. So I, I look at this and I think that, you, you know, when, we are Christians, you know, before we were Christians, these things, sexually immoral, impure, or greedy, some of these things are, are just going to feel natural to us, like exactly. to do, right? Because we don't have the word of God in our lives. We don't have the Holy Spirit convicting us. We don't have, you know, this understanding of that there is good and there is right and there's wrong and, and, and there's, there's evil and, and, and that we need to do what is right. And so you're right. I think everyone is going to fall into one of these categories somehow, uh, at least before we are a Christian. And, and I think that, um, you know, so I think there's a very clear, like, Hey, if, if this is who you are, uh, I think he's talking about non-Christians in many ways. And, and then, and then Corey's right that, that, you know, Jesus thankfully has died on the cross to pay the penalty for these sins so that we aren't um, we, we aren't stuck with with these penalties that we've incurred uh, so that we can live with with God now on the flip side you know I think that we as Christians still can struggle with these things right you mm-hmm. know and and so the question that I would I would pose is you know as we are Christians you know who maybe struggle with sexual immorality um, you know, uh, and we may not want to, you know, we, we may, you know, um, struggle with, you know, Corey was talking about it. I think it was last week and, and, you know, I, I've had my own struggles with pornography and, you, you know, when you're in the midst of that and you're going, I don't want this anymore. I'm, I'm a Christian. I know this is wrong. I don't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you come across a verse like this, you know, that can be a really kind of hard, like, oh man, am I outside the kingdom of, of Christ? Because I am struggling with a sexual addiction here. And, and so, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think this verse is talking to Christians who are struggling with these things, or is it talking to people who are not Christians, who are just going along and just doing it, you know, doing these things without even caring? No, when I'm looking at it, there's there's all these these opportunities out there, and I I think back to you know who I was before Christ and who I am now, and recognizing. And really understanding that you have these underlying default settings for maybe sexual uh, sexual immorality or impure thoughts or, you know, being greedy or anything along those lines. But understanding that we have this example in Jesus of, of who we should be and being able to 
put those put those thoughts in their in their proper spot, you know, which is, you know, aside. You don't focus on mm-hmm. those. You focus on on Jesus and and his example that he set for us and who we're supposed to be. I would think that he's got to be talking to just about everybody. And but I think you had touched on a really good part. If you identify as one of these as one of these things as being sexually immoral or impure or greedy, then there's the issue. If you're if you're identifying as one of those, yeah. What do you, what do you think, Corey? Did you have any thoughts there? Uh, no, I was just kind of I was kind of looking back over this again too. Um, I think that, I mean, I think that he is talking to both sides of that. There, I mean, people that have taken you know that have accepted Christ and people that haven't. Because I mean, obviously, we still have to avoid these things as Christians. And mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think that he's saying. I don't the way that I understand it anyway, I don't think that he's saying that you don't have an inheritance in the kingdom of, of Christ and of God. Um, you know, as a Christian, if you've accepted Christ, because we know that he has mercy for us, uh, you know, every day we have, we have forgiveness of sins, um, and that available to us. But another word that another, when I'm reading that, it, when it says every sexual immoral or impure or greedy person who is an, who is an idolater, that phrase, and I could be wrong here, but it almost sounds as though he's saying you've made these things an idol in your life versus like this is a one-off like kind of, well, I slipped up kind of thing. Like this almost sounds like this is your, this is who you are and this is something you're allowing yourself to continue to be and you've made this a you know, you've decided you're going to worship this in your life and it's important above all these other things mm-hmm. and important above your relationship with Jesus. And so mm-hmm. that's, I think that's what it's talking about there. And if you, if you have chosen to step away from Christ and you've chosen to make those things, your idol and what you're worshiping, mm-hmm. then I would, I would think, you know, if you're making an active decision to step away from Christ then yeah, you wouldn't have that inheritance, but right. So I, I think there's some good truth in that. Um, I think that I was just looking at it again as you were talking, and I was just thinking that we got to look at not just verse five, but I think we got to look at three, four, and five as as part of it. And mm-hmm. like kind of three kind of really starts this discussion on sexual immorality and impurity and and greed should not be hurt should not even be heard of among you as is proper for saints. Um, and what he what he is saying is, I think he's contrasting the way that we should live as opposed to the way that that this world lives in many ways. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, he's saying, hey, you know, what these are the these are the things that we need to remove from our lives. And and I think when we understand the Bible as a whole, we understand that, um, like in First John, it tells us that if we do have a, if we do make a mistake, if we do sin. You know, we have Jesus there who has died on the cross and already paid right. the penalty for it. We can go and ask for forgiveness. It's not this expectation that now that I am a Christian, all of a sudden I must be perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm never going to fall back into this or or struggle with addictions that that are that are unhealthy and, and are sinful and, and that we need to need need to deal with. Um, it, it's that these are the things that we recognize and we remove as opposed to saying, well, I'm just going to choose to live into this as Josh was kind of talking about this idea of making it your identity or as you were talking about allowing it to be your idol, uh, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is that you're making an idol in place, of, in place of God. And, and so, you, you know, I, I think the, the Bible is clear that, that, uh, we are going to struggle with these sort of things um, as we also struggle in surrendering our lives to God. Right? You know, the, the longer we take to surre- truly surrender, truly give things over to Christ, uh, truly make him Lord in our life, the mo- you know, make him the one we worship, not the idol, you know, the more we're going to struggle with these sort of things that mm-hmm. he's saying, hey, these need to not be a part of our lives. This is this is probably one of my favorite parts of the bible where this is the benchmark this is like actual written out instruction you know when when people talk about how should you live and it's these simple verses like this where it says 
where it says uh, obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather give thanks. You know, that's that's the whole thing of, you know, ensuring that what you're saying is what you want to be heard. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't going to pick up on, you know, sarcasm or joking necessarily, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and nobody's going to nobody's going to think less of you because you don't speak foolishly or obscenely. But they're absolutely going to think more of you if you're, uh, you know, giving thanks and speaking highly of situations and controlling your tongue and being able to speak godly words. And then that just allows you to build that relationship and hopefully be able to spread the word and, and get it out there for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think we go back to verse two. Where it tells us to walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. And I think that when when we we look at this idea that I'm going to walk in love as Christ walked in love, like mm-hmm. these sort of lists become, a, you know, a little bit less necessary because if I'm, if I'm being loving, then I'm not going to use obscene and, and crude jokes. You know, I, I'm not going to engage in, in some of these, in these behaviors, you know, even the ones we were talking about last week with bitterness and anger and shouting and slander and, mm-hmm. and things like that. They, they just don't, they just don't work, you know? And, and I think, you know, I, I think that there, there are times when, when we, you, you know, it's kind of like trying to hit a target. Like if, if you say my goal is to not miss the target, you can you can hit all over the edge of the target, um, but if you say my goal is to hit the center of the target, th- then you're going to get much more closer to it. And I think that love really kind of counts as the center of the target. Mm-hmm. And we can look at all these other things to say, hey, I'm I'm going to not miss the target. Well, you're going to hit all over the place, you know, avoiding this thing and avoiding that, you know, talking this way or joking that way. But mm-hmm. but when you say, you know. Love is love is the center of the target. It's the bullseye. You know that's when you're going to start getting more accurate in 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 your life and and your shooting. And and you're not going to have to worry about not missing the target. You're just going to hit the center all the time. Right. That's an awesome way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And I I, I agree with you, Josh. Like I really do like these kind of you know these kind of lists. And like you're saying, Greg, as you as you work towards these things, like you're you're gonna get farther away from necessarily needing the list but you know like even even things you know like in the last uh last section where you look at something like um no foul language should come from your mouth but only what is good for building up and i think about something like that what only what is good for building up and sometimes you know i'm joking around with people with work and and they're being frustrating or whatever and i i might say something kind of not super kind to them but uh-huh. in a joking manner but i think about even something that, like that you know just being challenged by those words there yeah. only something that's good for building up like how how are my words that are you know maybe meant jokingly but are are they kind and are they building that person up probably not like so just having that in mind like hey this is this is what's loving this is what's not that it really does help it go a long way to give you something to aim for and yeah and just help you grow so it'd be nice if sarcasm was just a little bit building <laughs> oh man it is not <laughs> that, that, is, great? that is part that's built into my language unfortunately yeah. i think but so then i think that like some of what this does is like okay if my if my goal is love the way that jesus loved then these lists become kind of a uh, a check to make sure that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if, if I'm loving, then I'm not going to use obscene talk. I'm not going to engage in sexual immorality. I'm going, mm-hmm. you know, and if I think that I'm loving, but I'm still, you know, engaging in, in a greedy, impure lifestyle, then then I have to, then I'm forced to have to decide, and you know, am I really doing loving or not? And it just kind of becomes this like little check mark of, Hey, am I really, or, you know, am I really doing what really kind of may, you know, means love? You know, I think of, uh, you know, I think of, of weightlifting and, and I, I like to lift weights, but there's a number of different things that when you're, when you're weightlifting, you're thinking about moving, you know, this bar, but there's, there's a number of different, like, 
cues that help you make sure that you stay on target with moving the bar. It's not simply, hey, I'm going to lift, you know, in the bench press, I'm going to lift this bar up off my my chest. You know, it's it's how am I moving my my elbows in comparison to my shoulders? Am I, you know, pressing my feet into the floor? Am I, you know, all these number of different different things that that are cues to help me accomplish moving this bar in a, in a path that's that's proper. And, and that's kind of what this becomes is. Hey, this this idea of you know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna love well, I'm gonna be able to just kind of look at these things and go these things can't be in my life, um, mm-hmm. and 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 help you know figure that out. No, those are, that I mean that's really awesome because those are those are definitely indicators that you don't have you know God necessarily as as the forefront in your life if you've if you've got that or you know maybe that you're you're not doing as well as you could do. You know, their mm-hmm. their symptoms is uh, a term I use sure. with my with my children of, you know, these are these are symptoms of of having a life that that, you know, needs some needs some polishing. Right. You know, there's there's certainly things that you do like you're talking about with with the lifting weights like, yeah, you can you can move heavy loads, but can you do it in a, in a healthy way? That's going to allow you to, to continue to do it. So, you know, having these these benchmarks, these um these targets in mind, it allows you to do things in, in the most proper way. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's real easy to hurt yourself if you're just going at thing without really thinking about, you know, the, the little things, the specifics and mm-hmm. sure. for sure. Greg's killing it with the analogies today. I he know. Really is doing I know. a great job. They're just, uh, they're just there today. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, there are days when I wish I could, I could come up with a good analogy and, and then I got nothing. So you got to take them when they come. <laughs> Celebrate the victories when they arrive. Exactly. exactly. Man, I am using this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Taking uh, notes over there. <laughs> well, we are, we are at time for sure. And, and I've enjoyed this conversation, but, uh, why don't we close with a, a word of prayer? Josh, would you be willing to pray for us? Absolutely. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for today. Thank you for these men. Thank you for these listeners that, that we're going through this with. Lord, I, I praise you for your word and for the for the example that you set for us. And you show us how to live and how to live right. And show us the symptoms of, of what it looks like to not live right. Lord, I just, I, I praise you for all of the uh, the examples that that you set and how you give us this this these revelations and understanding for our lives and how we can do this in order to celebrate you and to glorify you lord i pray that you just be with everybody that's listening amen amen Thank you so much for listening. Please like, follow, and share so we can reach as many as possible. If you're not already participating in a small group, we highly encourage you to get involved in one. If you have a prayer request or comments on the show, you can send them to our email in the show description. Once again, thank you for joining us.